In this lesson, we'll continue our view of Math Test 8, Section 4, Calculator Permitted, questions 35 and 36. So we're getting a little further into the grid-in section. 38 is the end of the test. So these are going to be harder than the first four grid-ins we had. All right, let's take a look at question 35. The graph of the function f is defined by f of x. So this equation is shown in the xy plane. Okay, so here's y equals f of x. The function g is not shown as defined by g of x equals negative x plus 10. What is one possible value of a such that f of a equals g of a? And so the function we have is a parabola, and we have the equation here, right? We see that um, it has a, it opens downward, and we have the function. There's another function that's defined negative x plus 10, and that's a linear equation, and we want to find when these equal. So we're looking for the solutions when the line, <coughs> excuse me, meets the parabola. Now, there's really two ways to do this. I'm going to show you more of an academic way, at least so you understand it, but there's definitely, for this problem, a good shortcut, and you could uh, save a lot of time. So I'm going to just do the academic way. Again, one possible value means there's more than correct one correct choice, you just have to find one solution. So the first step is we're going to set these both equal to each other. So I'm just going to rewrite this first one. It's negative 1 half times x minus 4 squared plus 10. And we want to set the two functions equal. Remember, this is f of x and g of x. And we want to find the value a where they're both equal to each other. And so here's the other equation. We have negative x plus 10. Now the first step is we see the tens are going to cancel out, right? Also, always think about trying to simplify this. What I would do is I would multiply both sides. You can see we have this negative one half and, and really don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to multiply both sides, in this case, by negative two. The reason this is just going to become one, and now on the left side we're just left with x minus four, the quantity squared, and this is going to become two x. All right, see how much I simplified that by? So now we're just gonna solve it. And what we can do, remember this is the quantity squared, so I have to FOIL this out. We get x squared, we get minus 4x minus 4x, which is minus 8x. Then we get plus 16 equals 2x. And I'm gonna subtract the 2x, bring it over to the left side. So I get x squared, it's gonna be minus 10x plus 16 equals zero. I want the solutions. So this is a little bit of factoring. What are the factors of negative of positive 16 to get negative 10? Well, we know that uh, 8 and 2, right? We want negative 10, so we're going to use negative 8 and negative 2. That does work. That's positive 16. When we add them, it's negative 10. So the solutions, we've got 2, 8, and 2. Either one, you could grid in, and that would be it. Again, that took a little bit of time, but let me show you a shortcut for this problem. And you, if you can recognize this, I think it just saves a lot of time. So we don't have the equation of this linear function, right? We don't have this. But we know it has a y-intercept of 10. And so that's right here when the x is 0. We know it has a downward slope of negative 1. So it, it moves down 1 and across 1. And we can just sort of grid it, sketch it out, and see where it intersects. Now, you want to be careful because you always have to look at the units. You see how the unit here one of these boxes is one so this would be nine and then we've got another one of these boxes is ten but look down here you see how they it's not consistent one of these is 0.5 and so that's what you really have to pay attention to so let's just think about we're going to go down one and we want to get to one and so here's one so this would be the point right here if we're just drawing this line so you see how we went down one and I went over one. Okay, now we're gonna do it again. So down one to eight and over one, and you see how perfectly that fits? So here's one solution, right? This would be eight. If you kept drawing it, you do get two, but that really saves a lot of time. So if you understand how these functions work and how to find the intersection, again, it's not always gonna be so easy, but definitely a shortcut. All right, let's take a look at number 36. In the triangle RST above, 
point W not shown lies on RT. What is the value of the cosine of RSW minus the sine of WST? So we have a point that's not shown that lies in RT. Here's RT. I'm just going to draw a point right here. Let's just say this is W. And we want to find the value of the cosine of angle RSW. So RSW, right? remember the S is in the middle. So we want for this, we want the cosine of that angle. And we want to subtract it from the sine of WST. WST, it's going to be this one here. Right? And so minus the cosine, oops, sorry, minus the sine of this. And this, you know, there's not too many trick questions on the test. It's either it's going to be basic SOHCAHTOA. There is one co-function identity you need to know. And this really is saves a lot of time. If you know this, you can instantly solve this. But the one co-function identity that gets tested is that the sine of an angle always equals the cosine of the complement. What is the complement? Well, that means the two angles add up to 90. You could even switch it. The cosine of an angle equals the sine of the complement. And so the key here is you see how we're splitting up this angle, but we have right here, we know that it started out with 90. So no matter what point you pick for W, we know that these two angles are gonna add up to 90, right? Doesn't matter where you draw a W, they have to add up to 90. And this is just testing that co-function identity. There's no solving if you know this identity. But the cosine of this angle equals the sine of the complement. And these are complementary angles. And so the answer here is if they're equal, it's zero. And so again, just have to know that it's the one co-function identity that gets tested, the answer is zero.